Hey, Scotch Trekker. So Hi. in this episode, Evil Burnham um, rebels and then she's tortured and then she repents, but she's not really repented. Um, but then she gets killed. And oh, there's so much in this episode. That's true. I think we need to break it down. Let's review the episode. In this episode, we return to the middle universe where Discovery pays a visit to Ryza. Back in the prime universe, an old friend returns in the form of the Guardian of Forever, and he, yes, he, not it, then facilitates the departure of another old friend, namely Emperor Giorgio. What did you think about this episode? There's a lot in this episode, and I I enjoyed it, but there was so much information so fast that I, I spent a lot of the episode just sort of catching up on the last minute's worth of action. Um, loads of highlights for me, but I think it's definitely going to need second, third, maybe fourth viewing, which isn't an issue for me. I'm more than happy to do that for Discovery. Mm. What about yourself? Um, this episode seemed to me as if it was essentially in two halves. The first part was thoroughly enjoyable for me. I kept thinking it was turning out to be the best episode of the season so far and was stunned and saddened when Mira Giorgio seemed like she was a goner. I hadn't realised Emperor Giorgio had grown on me to that extent. I'm really surprised you've said that because when we've talked in the past, you don't seem to have been bought into that story. Um, mm. You definitely, in the last review, you definitely weren't over enamoured with has going over to the mirror universe what's what was uh, the this time i wasn't um, emotionally invested in, in her as a character either um because i thought i thought she kept coming out with like one-liners and stuff like that and, and she wasn't really she didn't really seem to be like a fully fleshed out character as okay. such, i felt so far we've had far from home part one and unification three but this is the first part two we've had in Discovery since the second season finale, Such Sweet Sorrow Part Two. And I liked that this episode was a continuation. I also really liked the portrayals of the mirror characters in the first half of the episode and how it departed from the way that quite a few of the episodes up to now have had Admiral Vance direct the Discovery on a mission. It will need to follow Starfleet protocol. Another aspect I really like is how the opening credits of this episode were changed to be an upside down, horizontally reversed version of the usual season three Discovery title sequence. Yeah, and it's also in negative, i.e. the colours are reversed. That's true, and I think it's a cool way to graphically represent at the start of the episode the change of setting to the middle universe. Yeah. What's your opinion regarding the fact we didn't get to see Lorca, but instead some dudes named Duggan? In person, not so terrifying. I must admit, I, though I was on the edge of my seat, kept thinking, are we going to get... Are we going to get him to come? Is he, is he going to just sort of come in left field and, and we're just going to be absolutely thrown by this? Um, yeah, Duggan, I'd not heard of him before. And th there was a couple of times where I was disappointed. We, we got to an edge of something and I thought, we're going to find something. We're going to see something amazing. I was really hoping that we were going to see Riser as an example. Um, we went right to the edge of Riser. We've arrived. And I just thought we've seen Riser over the years um, with D DS9 went to Riser a, a few times and it would have just been really cool just to have seen Riser through the discovery eyes and so I was a bit disappointed that that didn't happen just from a nostalgia point of view and to see how the discovery yeah. writers and the effects guys portrayed Riser um, but the same with Lorca I was I was kind of hoping that we were gonna see him sort of come left field and and just be sort of blown away with that and it didn't happen no one has heard from Lorca I don't think he's coming sort of led down a path and then pulled back and I thought I think that kind of happened a lot in this episode mm. okay um I think it would have been interesting to see Mirror Riza specifically because as you say like Riza 
the Prime Riser has appeared in, in DS9 and also in The Next Generation and in Enterprise as well. Um, so yeah, I thought it would have been interesting to, to differ that portrayal by, by actually being the Mirror Riser being shown in this episode. Um, in the episode's second half, I was hugely disappointed when Carl turned out to not to be a Q, but the Guardian of Forever. So we also didn't get to see Lorca and Georgia left the ship at the end. I know you're not entirely familiar with the original series, so how excited were you to see the Guardian of Forever? Did you know about it beforehand? And were you disappointed Carl didn't turn out to be a member of the Q Continuum? I am the Guardian of Forever. percent i really wanted him to be a q um totally invested in the q continuum being um a huge voyager fan and seeing the q continuum in two different episodes seeing it as a long desert highway um with a gas station this is the q continuum a road in a desert i told you so this is a manifestation of the continuum that we hope falls within your level of comprehension. This way. And also as the civil, the American Civil War. This is a much more colorful representation for a human of American descent, don't you think? So it would have been really great to have known Carl as a Q. So I was, I I was really not disappointed, but yeah, it would have been. I would have preferred him to have been a Q. Um, so no, I wasn't aware of the guardian of the. What what's the phrase they use? Guardian and forever. Yeah. What's a guardian of forever? Why haven't we heard of you? So tell me a little bit about that. Well, so it appeared in the original series episode, "The City in the Edge of Forever." Incredible power. It can't be a machine as we understand mechanics. And what is it? A question. Since before your sun burned hot in space and before your race was born, I have awaited a question. You may remember last time I said uh, quite a few of the headlines and stuff like that on uh, Carl's newspaper were from the same episode. Um, so a lot of fans were speculating that it was the, the Guardian of Forever. You know, you really should just read the paper. Everything you need to know is right here in black and white. In fact, I heard someone sort of in the know say that they knew that it was going to be the Guardian of Forever. But I was like, well, I really hope it's not, because I think for the same reason that I, I was really hoping that it wasn't going to be that Lorca was from um, the Mirror Universe, um in the you know to signpost it so much and then just not to have a twist but to actually be the case that you know that he is actually from the mirror universe and that it is the guardian of forever i don't think that's really you know much of a surprise um unfortunately <laughs> maybe it's a case of if you are like yourself absolutely ingrained in star trek it does lead you through that path. But somebody like myself that's got a good knowledge, but maybe not as good as yourself, it was a bit of a twist. So, yeah. Um, but and I'm also, not the twist um, you wanted. <laughs> and also, well, also, the, the city now on the edge of forever is widely regarded as one of the best original series episodes. And the same uh, concepts, the Guardian of Forever, is also in one of the best regarded episodes of the animated series, which is called Yesteryear. So it's a callback to the, those two episodes. Guardian, did you hear that? I hear it all. This is also the first time that uh, we see the Guardian forever personified as such, because you know, like the big um, sort of archway, that's how it always appears apart from in this episode. The personification of the Guardian basically harkens back to the fact that it was initially conceived by Harlan Elson to be a group of gigantic, nine-foot-tall men who guarded the time portal device. Elson was majorly annoyed by the way his script was changed and repeatedly redrafted by Gene Roddenberry and others during the writing of The City and the Edge of Forever, 
and over the decades since, the Guardian of Fire was included in multiple stories which were considered but ultimately abandoned. The Discovery writing staff were extremely eager to feature the Guardian of Forever in the series. Originally, the Guardian was actually to be shown briefly in the third episode of Discovery's first season, entitled Contacts with for Kings. As such, a concept illustration of how the Guardian might look in that case was included in the reference book The Artist Star Trek Discovery. Carl was named after the well-known American astronomer Carl Sagan, and the writers based the character's personality somewhat on him. Okay. You say that you didn't realise you were as invested in, in Giorgio, but you really enjoyed the first half of the of the episode. What was it that sort of stood out for you in the first half of the episode? Was it the action? Was it the, the, the torture chambers? What was it that you enjoyed so much? Well, as I said, like, I really enjoyed like the murder portrayals. Um, the break from sort of continuity from the, the, you know, it seemed to be so many times the Admiral would order the Discovery on a mission, you know, it was, it was a bit, again, cliched because it was happening so often, um, but I quite liked that they opened on the ISS Discovery. really liked the music as well. I thought the music in this episode was really good um, in general. Um, yeah, I, th I thought there was a lot to, to enjoy. I know that you enjoyed the uh, portrayal of the crew. Anybody that stood out for you outside of sort of Burnham and Giorgio? I really enjoyed the scene when you think that Burnham has um, finally um, taken up allegiance to Emperor Giorgio and yeah. then she betrays the Emperor but not only that the people that you thought have been killed all come in then yeah I thought that was really cool can't trust this one Emperor of course you can but I want you to <laughs> It was a lie then. Yeah, yeah, that really surprised me. She's she's already thrown all of their badges on the table yeah. and killed Detmer in front of everybody, which was brutal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. brutal. And then yeah, she's she's sort of humiliated, she's she's down, and she turns up and then there's Culver. He he's still a bad guy. And yeah, that, that sort of threw me as well. So yeah, that was a, a a good twist for me. I I genuinely thought she'd she'd come over to Giorgio. Mm -hmm. Did you think Burnham would die in the end for that scene? I didn't expect either of them to die when um, Georgia was dying. I thought that was like really sad. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> which, which surprised me as well, because you know, having said, I don't think she's a, <laughs> that well written a character and stuff like that. So yeah, I thought it was very, very effective. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> surprised yourself, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I did think it was quite badass when the Kelpian, which is obviously Saru, comes in with the big old gun mm. shooting up. I don't think I've seen Saru with a huge gun shooting up the place. So um, mm. I, I, quite, I quite enjoyed seeing Doug Jones play that part. So that was quite cool. Yeah, I was puzzled when uh, Giorgio talks to that Kelpian and, and says she knew a Kelpian called Saru. I knew a Kelpian once in another time another place his name was Saru and I was like well does surely that means because it's Doug Jones playing that part that he's the mirror Saru but then he doesn't recognize the name so I thought that was strange I I thought that but I did wonder that maybe because Kelpians are so lower class on the mirror universe mm. maybe they've not even given names mm. They're, they're yeah. literally just slaves, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember a previous instance of any of the Kelpians in the Middle Universe being called by name or anything. 
they're literally just hey you and menu number one <laughs> yeah I loved the way that um, Giorgio explains why kelpians are not on the menu anymore. Kelpian flesh is too high in cholesterol and it's stringy. Disgusting. <laughs> How do you think this episode could have been better than it was? <laughs> For that, rep, that line not to be a reference. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I see I see Kelpian's not on the menu anymore. Yeah, it's not. End of. <laughs> Don't go into the, the stringy because that was disgusting. <laughs> um yeah, that was that was quite harsh. <laughs> um okay, so you said about the second half that you didn't think it was as good as the first half. Talk to me about that. I could basically think of three ways that I think this episode could have been better than the second half. Okay. Um, one being that I probably would have liked it more if Carl had turned out to be part of the Q continuum rather than the guardian of whatever. Also, yeah, I I think that it would have been more interesting if Georgia had stayed on the ship. When you say stay on the ship, which ship do you mean? Do you mean Discovery or do you mean in the Mirror Universe? On Discovery. Okay. But, like, obviously, before watching this episode, I didn't even know I, you know, had, had, that, had that belief. Because I didn't realise how, how sort of valuable a character I think she is. Yeah. And now I do. I can't remember the third thing. Okay. Yeah, just possibly, like, a twist ending, I think, can, can improve an episode, potentially. Okay. Um, and there wasn't much of that. It was just, you know, the, the crew um, gathering, having drinks for Giorgio. Toasting, toasting Georgia. To Philippa Georgia. That was quite amusing in that when you're normally toasting a lost colleague, which mm -hmm. technically she's lost, mm -hmm. you would normally say, you know, great guy, funny, but they were all barbed comments. She had no tact and God, I love that about her. Mm. And that's what Giorgio is was. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it it that was that was quite amusing. And um, quite apt, I suppose, for her. Characters. Yeah. 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 It was. It was. So aside from that storyline, you've got Stamets and Adira and Book dealing with the Kelpian ship. Are you invested as a viewer in the Kelpian ship? No. You're, you're still not there? No. Are you? Um, I, I think because it was so weighted with the Mirror Universe, it almost, mm. it almost was a throw into the episode to keep you tantalised for maybe next episode. Is is what I think they were doing. So I've kind of got to see how I go next week. I was more, I was more bought into the idea last episode. Mm -hmm. But I think that's, I think that's because you find out that it's a Kelpian ship when before you didn't know that. Yeah. But I, I think this episode, it didn't really provide anything. It was like crumbs, you know, it wasn't really anything substantial. Yeah. I don't think it's really been paced right. Okay. Um, well, we'll have to see what happens. Were you more sad when Georgia seemed to be dying or when she left the ship? I don't think I was sad. Mm. You know, when she, when Mirror Burnham um, seems to kill her, did you, did you see that coming? No, 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 no. When, when Burnham switched again, no, I did not see that at all. Completely threw me. Her retribution had been for her to be the slayer of the rebels herself and as far as they were concerned she'd done that here were all the the badges and she, they she had killed Detmer in front of everybody and yeah. to me that's it she I mean that scene where she was broken seemingly in front of Giorgio this this crumble 
of a woman in front of Giorgio. She's on her knees. I mean, it was played so well. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that it had gone through months, you know, lots and lots and lots of time. That girl was hard as nails. And then for her to turn around and switch it up and go for, for Giorgio was just... Mm. What an amazing short arc in that episode for mm. that actor to mm. play. I mean, it was brilliant. I mean, she just knocked it out of the park. She was fantastic yep. in that episode. No doubt. Uh, what did you think of Emperor Giorgio's parting words to the Prime Burnham and the idea of the Prime Burnham becoming uh, Discovery's captain? Saru has navigated Discovery admirably, but he's not the only one who's suited for the captain's chair. You have always been far greater than you could imagine, Michael. I struggled a little bit with that speech. Mm. What I needed to take in on board was that we've got a Giorgio who's been through three months of Mirror Universe, whereas to Burnham, it had been a minute. Mm. And the witty comebacks and the, the fight that she'd had with Burnham the previous week, kill me, you know, give me the death I deserve, and then you've got this loving, I always believed in you, the touching of the face. I thought, this is, this is, this is a big jump for Burnham. And Burnham was just accepting it. As for Burnham being a captain, mm -hmm. I don't know if she is captain material. Mm. She's proved too much to be the rebel. She nearly left Starfleet four or five episodes ago. So is she, is she Captain Material? Well, I think so. But we don't agree on the first officer, so we've always no, said that it's good to have different opinions. Burnham, even though, like you're saying, she's rebellious and stuff like that, so was Kirk. He was very rebellious, you know. And and yeah, quite a few of the, the captains and stuff like that um, have been like that. I don't think that's necessarily a, um, a drawback to being a captain. If you think about some of the things that Archer did, he pushed people to torture. Mm. He, he borderline on torture. He left... Um, he left a ship stranded once because he needed a piece of technology. So, yeah, there was a couple of times when he didn't always play by the rules. So do you think uh, Burnham's not cut out to be captain then? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I think there's got to be... I, I see what you're saying about Kirk and potentially Archer, but and and look at Cisco. There's been a, there was a couple of times with Cisco when he he didn't play with the rules. But yeah, and and even Picard. I suppose so. But she's she has literally had such a shake of her faith in Starfleet like three or four episodes ago. So I I don't know how you could. I mm. I've I've got to be convinced. Well, actually, also I'm thinking that maybe when. As, I, as I've said, and as I still expect, uh, will probably happen. Book joins up the Starfleet. Maybe that might um, push her even more. Um, you know, combined with Emperor George's words to her, um, to, 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 to not look out with Starfleet. Although, although she seems to have um, developed that way anyway, I would say. Um, you know, there's that episode recently where she tells uh, Book that she feels at home there. You feel like home. So are you. Um, you've already had that development. Um, yeah. 
and, yeah, and Frenchie was rebelling against Starfleet and stuff before that was before that. Yeah, she's reconciled, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Okay, the jury's out. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. So I think this episode left Giorgio in a very interesting situation for picking up her story in the forthcoming Section 31 series. Yeah. Yeah. We always wondered how they were going to get to get Giorgio from the Discovery timeline to Section 31. Mm -hmm. And now we know how it's happened. Yeah. And, and what's interesting is she's been put into a timeline that could be any timeline. Carl does say, surely, or as we know now, uh, the Guardian of the Forever, as we know from what he said, uh, he's returning her to a time, a part in the timeline when the middle universe and the prime timeline were together. Uh, it was before the, the middle universe basically split off to another another timeline um, or another universe, whatever. I'm going to send you back to a time when the mirror universe and the prime universe are still aligned, but it won't be easy. The paper says the forecast will be bumpy and painful. Lots of rainstorms, heartaches. How many stars out of five would you give this episode? I think this is going to be a three and a three and a half out of five for me. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. And you? Um, I'd say three with five for the first part and two for the second half. <laughs> so you you've averaged it out, have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed the first half of the episode for sure. The first half for you mm -hmm. was the best of this season. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty impressive because it's been a good season. Yeah. Okay. But so, I, I think some some opinions of episodes and stuff can change with time. Yeah. And multiple viewings. Yeah. So what are you guessing is gonna happen in the next what have we got left? Three episodes? Yeah, must be. I think we're gonna find a whole species of Kelpians, but nearly a thousand years has gone by. So what's happened to the Kelpians? Have they, I don't know, become ruthless killers in that thousand years? In this episode, um, the Admiral says to, to Saru, there's clearly like a, a Kelpian ship out there and you've waited like ages to see any other Kelpians. Um, so maybe like that factor will play into like the next episode or more, or multiple episodes where Saru is so um, emotionally invested in the Kelpians that it might be his undoing sort of thing or, you know, a difficulty at least. Okay. Um, and he runs off to be with the Kelpians and Burnham becomes the captain. Is that yeah. our prediction yeah. for the end of, is that a Scotch <laughs> Trekker, <laughs> Scott, the Scotch Trekker prediction? I'm sorry to say that but even if Admiral Vance turns out to be completely um, okay and, and completely trustworthy and stuff like that, in my head canon and my fan, fan fiction, he'll obviously always not be. He's a good guy. No. <laughs> I disagree. Either of us could be wrong in that guy. Yeah. But um yeah, I was thinking, well, I could be wrong, but we'd have to wait till like the very end of the last episode before before people will be like, Yeah, he was wrong. <laughs> or well, even even if it's in uh, next season, as has been um announced about uh Kovic or Kovic. How, however you say his name, um, he'll be back in season four. Yep. And, and if Admiral Vance is back in season four, then he it might be like then or even later that he turns out to be a bad guy all this time. <laughs> so you, He's you never not know. a bad guy. We'll agree to disagree on that one. Agreed. Good idea. Good idea. 
We hope you've enjoyed watching this review. If so, click on the thumb up icon at the bottom of the video window. Bye for now. Good tracking. Live long and prosper.